Hey everybody, this is certainly a weird time, isn't it? Especially when you're a movie reviewer and you don't have the option of going out to the theaters to review new movies. And even if I did, I don't know if I'd want to because it's just not worth the risk right now. But I do have a couple of movies I saw before everything hit the fan that I haven't vlogged yet. And Onward is one of those movies. And at first, I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to talk about this one right now, because I would be giving a favorable review, spoiler alert, for a movie that most of you do not have the option to go out and see. But it turns out Disney is putting this on VOD early. In fact, it may already be available by the time you watch this. And in a couple of weeks, it's hitting Disney+. Plus. So what the hell? Let's talk about Onward. Directed by Dan Scanlon, Onward takes place in what used to be a magical world filled with mystical creatures. Nowadays, the creatures are still there, but magic has been replaced by technology because it can do everything magic used to be able to do, but instead of mastering complex spells, all you gotta do is push a button. And the story focuses on brothers Ian and Barley Lightfoot, played respectively by Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. On Ian's 16th birthday, he is gifted a wizard staff that used to belong to his late father, who Barley doesn't remember very well and Ian never met because he passed shortly before he was born. And along with that staff, they have a visitation spell which will allow their father to come back from the dead for one 24-hour period. Unfortunately, the spell only half works, literally. It only brings back his lower half which means he can poop, unlike Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. He has nothing to poop out because without a top half, he can't eat. But the important thing is, he has a butthole. And I think we can all take great comfort in that in this trying time. And so the brothers and their dad's lower half must embark on a quest to find a gem that will power the rest of the spell and bring him back before the 24-hour period is up. When I saw this in the theater, it was preceded by a Simpsons short, which is... So weird, because Disney owns everything now. One mouse to rule them all. I did enjoy the short. It's a cute little story about Maggie meeting some other kid on a play date in the park. But man, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get used to Disney owning The Simpsons. Weird. And as far as Onward is concerned, I don't think this is one of Pixar's best, but even average Pixar is still miles ahead of most. And I did enjoy this one. It's not Cars, I'll tell you that. It did start off a little slow, and apart from living in a world where feral unicorns are digging through people's garbage cans like some kind of magical winged raccoons, I didn't get the sense that it was going anywhere interesting. You have Ian, who is the younger, socially awkward brother who's trying to invite some other kids to his birthday party, but then his brother shows up and ruins everything. And Barley is the louder, more obnoxious brother who is big into fantasy role-playing games and is in the midst of what his mother refers to as the longest gap year ever. But once the staff finally comes into play and the brothers go on their epic quest, that's where things really pick up. And from that moment, the movie had me. The brothers' quest was very fun and involves all manner of mystical and mundane things. And I love how this universe combines the two. I was a little surprised to find out Dungeons and Dragons exists in this world. That seemed a little strange. I guess instead of fantasy, it's considered historical fiction. One of my favorite things in the movie was the Pixie Biker Gang, who are of course called the Pixie Dusters. There's a lot of great things like that in the movie. You could probably spend the entire time just playing a game of Spot the Easter Egg. And there are a lot of really good sight gags, especially involving the Path Dad. Holland and Pratt are both very good in this movie, and as different as these two characters are, they still do feel a lot like brothers. They fight, they argue, but at the end of the day, they got each other's back. And both of the brothers are very relatable characters, especially in terms of their quest. Uh, Barley, when he was younger, never really got the chance to properly say goodbye to his father and now might have an opportunity to do so. And Ian, of course, might actually be able to meet his father for the first time. And while they're on their adventure, there's a fun little side quest going on with Laurel, the boy's mother, played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, 
and Cory, a manticore played by Octavia Spencer. And Cory is probably my favorite character in this movie. She was awesome. She is this former adventurer who finally settled down and basically turned her adventurer's tavern into a Chili's. But now that the boy's quest may have the unintended side effect of unleashing a horrible curse, she finally has a chance to take up her sword and reclaim her former glory. Once she gets the sword back from the pawn shop. I did think it was a little weird that the mom's new centaur boyfriend is named Colt Bronco. Like, really? Colt Bronco? Hi kids, this is my new boyfriend, Horse Horse. And of course, John Ratzenberger is in the cast because, and I may have mentioned this before, if more than three years go by without John Ratzenberger appearing in a Disney or Pixar film, Great Cthulhu will waken from his eternal slumber and lay waste to this miserable world. It's true, look it up. So if you need something to keep yourself entertained during the apocalypse, you could certainly do a lot worse than Onward. It's very funny, it's charming, it's got fantastic animation. I mean, it is Pixar. So if you have a couple hours to kill, and right now who doesn't, give it a watch. And that's all I have to say about Onward. So until next time, stay safe, wash your hands, and take care.